everybody, it's Jeremy. Welcome back to Lucid's Tournament Game 7, where we are playing Helheim. This is turn 24. Let's jump into things. So, uh, we've been away for just a little bit because of the holidays, so kind of getting back into the swing of things. I know previously we had the... <gasps> Well, there might be a... Uh, Sarmatia might attack our capital, or more likely they'll attack a whole shit ton of our lands, and... Well, it actually seems like neither of those things happened, so let's investigate, shall we? We have completed Conjuration 3. Now we are running up Enchantment. Um, we have did some summoning of some Horned Serpents and some Ogres uh, for the potentiality that Hinom uh, attacks. We did some more reanimation, and we'll probably continue to do reanimation for the foreseeable future uh, to help grow an army in order to deal with Sauramatia. We did some site searching, didn't find anything, and then we had some battles. So we are raiding in Ungbaloth. Let's see how this goes. We've got Jarl 3 over here versus eh, very little, so this should go fine. Blessing, Air Shield, Mistform, probably should be Mistforming first. Holy Avenger, whack, dead. Whack, dead. Whack, dead. Nice. Blood Surge, making that real easy. We got another battle in a High Peaks. Again, we are raiding. Versus, uh, again, pretty much nothing. So, Blessing, Air Shield, Mistform. And Holy Avenger. Whack dead. Whack dead. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Whack dead. Nice. <laughs> so that well, that works about as expected. Fantastic. Very, very pleased with that. Um, what do we have next? Well, um, previous turn we had raided into Laria. And it seems like Sarmatia has pulled back in order to counter-raid that. So we've got two little groups. Maybe in the possibility that we were going to... Um, that we were going to hold there or try to PD dump or something like that, right? Like try to pull a trick on him so he sent more than he would normally need to. Um, but we right now are in the modus operandi of... Very low commitment attacks. Very low commitment attacks. Basically as, as low as we possibly can. Um, and this is but one PD. So one gold. Plenty to... Get slaughtered by this... Oh boy. Okay, he did. <laughs> Unfortunate. Okay, so he sent a little cluster of Oyerpados there. And then we actually get to see a battle in Gifa as well. As it looks like, uh, he pings the province to see if there is anything still here. And there is. Um, so this is his fortress. Uh, so he pings the province with a soothsayer just to see if there is anything on the province. There is. Soothsayer routes. Probably routes right back into the fortress. Easy peasy. Fantastic. And we have some unexpected events. A great fertility festival has was celebrated in the province. Growth plus two. Nice. Province income plus two. Nice, I guess. It's like 20 gold over the course of 10 turns. So, okay. This is like the weakest province income event I've ever seen. But, I mean, I'll take it. It's At least it's not a bad event. Ah, and then we have magic gems have been found in the split trunk of an oak. Nature gems plus seven. That's good. That's good. Uh, we, in our patrolling, actually discovered a Marverni scout. Cool. And killed him. And then we did a little bit more patrolling uh, in Helheim. And Bernard's brave men has been purchased and will fight for our cause. So, what are we doing this turn? Well, with, with Saramesha's retreat back to his kind of uh, heartlands to counter raid uh we are going to go a little more aggressive right um it means that our capital 
is not immediately threatened. Uh, so technically, this group of 10-ish Oyarapatas right here could make it to our cap. They could go um, 3, 6, 9, 12. Um, actually, they can't, now that I think about it. So that's 3, 6, 9, 12, um, 15, and then they can't actually make it onto Helheim. So we can't get attacked from Ard. We can't get attacked from Laria or Sarmatia or Menes. So this is where we can see little groups of his uh, troops. So since we cannot get attacked on our capital, we are going to move out of our capital. Um, and we're going to move out in force. I say we're not actually moving out in force because we're leaving the main bulk of our forces here. Um, our uh, large stack of Heardmen, um, etc., but we are moving out with some force. How about that? Um, first, let's talk about his actual heartlands. We are going to be raiding in a number of different locations. We are probably going to suffer, start suffering um, attrition with our Jarls, right? I am anticipating that Saramesha is going to start um, patrolling, moving into provinces that are his and patrolling those provinces and that's going to get some of our Banyarls killed, right? But we're going to have to see, right? We can't, we can't. We have to test the waters on that first before we make that conclusion. So, um, we are going to move into Towers of Heaven and attack. We're moving into Wise Spring Grove and attacking. And we're moving into Zimria and attacking, all with just Vanyarls. Okay. Uh, we continue to have a force on Sorrow on Saramesha to keep eyes there. We continue to have a force in Ard to keep eyes there. Same in Gifa, and we're actually going to put one on Glimmering Fields. Okay. In Ungbaloth and High Peaks, we are leaving but a single province defense. Um, if he is going to ping it, um, he he's going to have to do so with something that can survive. Otherwise, he's going to have to take it with an actual force. And this is what we want to do. We want to kind of like attrition him down uh, slowly but surely. He's going to have to, if he wants to keep his land, he's going to have to stay counter raiding. If he wants to go on the offensive, he's going to have to leave his land undefended. Right? Or he's going to have to fracture his forces more and more and more to handle the area that he's covering. Um, and that brings us to our next two moves. Um, one which is very low commitment and I assume is going to fail if it meets resistance. And that is we're moving Bernard the Brave and his little force, right, out into Rain. So he's going to attack into Rain. We'll see how that goes. Uh, if he meets anything he will likely lose, right? Uh, the Brave Company is not... The Pikeneers are not very strong. Uh, I say they're not very strong. They're good. It, it's a good It's a good mercenary unit. Um, but they're not... I'm not backing them up with anything, right? I'm not reinforcing them with anything. If I were to reinforce them with, like, our Herdmen or even some Hell Herdings or things like that, then they could probably be pretty good. Um, but I'm not ready to make that move, and I still want to move them, because I'm not sure I'm going to um, refresh their contract in three turns. So, we got them now, let's use them. We're going to attack in Rame. If they meet resistance in the form of Oirapadas, they will probably lose. Otherwise, they'll probably win. The next one is a little bit more of a dedicated attack force, and that is, is that we are attacking into Brightgate, with Jarl 9 and Jarl 10, leading 20 Hell Herdings and 6 Valkyries. I questioned doing this because there is the chance that he could move uh, 30 or so Oirapadas into Brightgate as a, oh, he's gonna, he's gonna try to anticipate me raiding him and attack it. So that this is what this is, right? Um, I am trying to anticipate him anticipating my raids. 
Brightgate is a very valuable province. I am trying to... I'm, I hope that he thinks I want to take Brightgate, which I do. Um, and that he is going to try to prevent my Jarls from taking Brightgate. Which a group of 5 to 10 Oirapadas will definitely do. But a group of 5 to 10 Oirapadas will probably, I'm not going to say guaranteed, but will probably die to a group of 20 Hellherdings and 6 Valkyries. I question sending the Valkyries because he has yet to see the Valkyries, I believe. Um, so there's kind of this situation of like, uh, holding on to the Valkyries could be a good idea for like the last moment. But if he sends 10 or 15 Hellherding or uh, Oirapadas, then my Hell Hurtings could lose, so I think we need the extra oomph from the Valkyries. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to hit that um, in the hope that he is going to anticipate Van Jarl activity and move someone to Brightgate. If he doesn't, then we just take Brightgate, and then we split up, and we start moving around uh, his territory, and we see how it goes. All right? No big deal. No harm, no foul. Um, so yeah, we'll see how it goes. I'm anticipating losing at least a couple of these because I am anticipating that he is going to start spreading out his units, um, into smaller groups to counteract my Jarl raiding. We'll see how it goes. Um, we are continuing to, now that we are less threatened, um, oh, by the way, I uh, talked to Hinom, he's just passing by. I actually think he might be moving up to attack Abyssia right now. Um, so, I actually kind of want to move this scout over slightly. Because um, I want to see if there's any kind of like border situation up here. Um, but yeah, he's not attacking us, or if he's attacking us, he's being very secretive and roundabout um, in, in doing it. So, we should be fine. Um, which means that we are moving Svart 1 and Jade Sork 1 around to uh, do more site searching, which is good. We definitely want to get that uh, going as quickly as possible. Continuing to site search uh, in our lands for Air 1. Um, we are researching more. We're sending more Jarls up towards his lands from Dead Forest and Koenberg. Uh, we are... Flipping back to making owl quills now that we have plus four air gems per month. Um, we're only losing one per turn. Uh, we are going to have enchantment two next turn. And then enchantment three shortly afterwards. Uh, so enchantment two is going to give us revive kings, which is going to be good in our... It's going to allow us to um, have better undead leadership right for our skeletal hordes that we're putting together which is going to be important um it also allows us to do things like flight on our little thugs and then enchantment three is going to give us a number of different things but specifically it's going to give us strength of giants and seeking arrow um seeking arrow potentially being worthwhile um if we take a look uh, Seeking Arrow will do 8 armor negating magic damage. That always hits the chest. Um, so we could potentially do some good work there. And Loki can actually cast it. Now the issue is, is that it's only 3 provinces um, uh, as a range, right? So our, our range is potentially limited. But it is an option. Um, could be useful in the right situations. Uh, we won't get Enchantment 3 this turn, but we will get it. So we'll get Enchantment 2 this turn, and then we'll get Enchantment 3 the following turn, probably. It uh, depends on how many mages we're moving around. Um, and then we will potentially be running up to Construction 4 in order to be able to make some better... I say better. Make some actual Thug Gear. Um, so, fingers crossed there. Um... 
Ugh. we're we're still in this kind of like weird pattern oh and so recruitment wise we're getting a disc this turn because i would like to start moving towards the concept of making uh corpse constructs uh we're recruiting more hell hurtings we're a little light on cash actually um so we're not recruiting a bunch of heard men and hearses everywhere we're, we are doing a Van Jarl because we need more Van Jarls. Uh, we are doing a Jade Maiden because that's the money that I had left over. We're actually moving Heardman into Pulmania so that we can stack um, our Heardman together. We're going to have close to, I think we have 13. We have another 12 here, another 4 here. So we're going to have close to 80 Heardman. Um... And then we're getting close to... Next turn, we're going to have 60 Long Dead. Um, the turn after that, we will probably have another 20 or so. It depends on whether or not I start utilizing the Dis to, to make um, reanimations as well. Uh, because I'll probably do that before I do Corpse Constructs. We want to do Corpse Constructs once we have gear for Corpse Constructs. Um, but... We're going to want to move sooner rather than later. What we're kind of looking for is we're looking for a... We're looking for something like Brightgate, right? We're looking for a situation where we, or Tyrannog, um, has a favorable engagement with Saramesha, and we take out a number of his Oiripatas, right? Um, and then we can move on his capital in force. And when I say in force, I mean like with the entire f***ing army. So it takes us one, two, three, four turns to get to his capital, uh, which is not great. Um, and I say one, two, three, four because I avoid Rame because Rame has deadly diseases. So, um, yeah, this is going to be... It's going to be awkward trying to finish this off. Because any time we decide, okay, now is the time to trigger, it's going to be a slow burn to get up there. And it's going to be... He's got a lot of mage power. It's going to be hard. And every turn that goes by, he gets more mage power, right? It's going to be... It's going to be hard to put the nail in the coffin on this one. Really hard. <laughs> Realistically. Um, anyways... That's going to be it for the turn. Hope you all enjoyed. I will see you next time. Bye, everybody.